Hello, today I'm going to be discussing independent dependent variables and how you can find them in a research article. And this is helpful anytime you read a research article, you're going to want to figure out what the causal relationship is that the authors are trying to document and how they're measuring it with respect to their independent and dependent variables. So I'm going to be using the article that um, I've been using throughout the semester, the Crime Triangle article by Baker and Wolfer. Um, so this article has to do with a problem-oriented policing project to reduce instances of park crime. And I'm just going to briefly read over the abstract here. This research illustrates the benefits of the police researcher partnership in preventing park crime in a suburban community. Parks can attract illegitimate users who engage in criminal activities. The park in this research project gained a reputation as a hotspot for alcohol, drug use, and vandalism. The social use of drugs and alcohol prompted the youthful offenders to target victims and engage in criminal behavior. A questionnaire evaluated the effects of problem-oriented policing intervention and prevention strategies. The general findings suggest that the problem-oriented policing paradigm and related crime prevention strategies reduce the level and fear of crime in this community. Okay, so basically what the abstract is telling us is uh, it gives us a description of the problem, but the main meat of the abstract here tells us what they did in the study. A questionnaire evaluated the effects of problem-oriented policing intervention and prevention strategies. Okay, so this is the independent and dependent variable relationship that they were examining. So they're trying to determine the effect of problem-oriented policing intervention and prevention strategies. And then this last sentence here, the general findings suggest that the problem-oriented policing paradigm and related crime prevention strategies reduced the level and fear of crime in this community. Okay, so they're testing the causal relationship between the problem-oriented policing and crime prevention strategies and the level of fear of crime in the community. Okay, um, so then as we go through the article, we'll probably see more evidence of this. Uh, remember from the discussion last time that we're going to want to skip to the methods section. Um, actually, I just want to draw your attention to this. So their method section is a combination of a case study. So here they describe exactly uh, some of the crime problems and the nature of the problems that they experienced at the park. And then these are the responses. Okay, so they did target hardening. Here's just a neat little map of the park itself. Okay, here's actually the events. So these are the uh, individual crimes that they, or well, the incidents that they noted that were leading to crime. And then here is the intervention, all right? Remember, they did a problem-oriented policing uh, and crime prevention intervention. So here they talk about they did proactive patrol. Um, it looks like they uh, targeted offenders and also they targeted victims, okay? And the method section describes how they actually did the study. So they were interested in knowing if these various interventions affected the fear of crime. Okay, so again, the causal relationship that they're arguing here uh, is that as we do problem-oriented policing, as we implement some of these offender strategies, victim strategies, proactive patrols, and so on, that we should see a reduction of fear of people that are in the community. And so the problem-oriented policing intervention is the independent variable, and then the dependent variable is the fear of crime. Okay. And then here in the results, they talk about how they measured the fear of crime and how they measured the reduction, okay? So this is their dependent variable, fear of crime. And basically, they used a questionnaire to ask people, do you feel safe in the park during the day? Do you feel safe during the night? Feel safe through the crime prevention efforts, okay? So again, the dependent variable being the fear of crime, all right? And then they have some other measures of other dependent variables. So here they had victimization questions. So they were asking people, had you been, uh, has your property been broken into in the last six months? 
had something stolen from your house. Notice vandalism. Notice public drinking. Have you been the victim of a crime? So again, they're interested in seeing if there is a decrease in victimization as a result of the problem-oriented policing strategies that they used in the park. And then here they were seeing if people actually noticed the strategies. Okay, so they had these questions. I regularly see police officers on patrol in the neighborhood. Closed circuit TV surveillance in the park reduced my fear. The new fence should improve crime prevention in the park. The bicycle patrol in the park and apartment complex has reduced my fear of crime. The walking patrol in the park and apartment complex has reduced my fear of crime. The elimination of weeds and shrubs obstructing the view in the park has reduced my fear of crime. So again, they're really hitting on that dependent variable of fear of crime, and they're trying to argue and assess that the independent variable, the problem-oriented policing project, all these strategies that they implemented actually led to a uh, reduction in the fear of crime. Okay, And that's pretty much it. So again, remember that whenever you read academic literature, they are arguing for a cause and effect relationship. There is going to be an independent and dependent variable. And your job is to read the study and identify what those causal relationships are and what those independent and dependent variables are. You'll want to look in the abstract for clues, just as I did here. And sometimes you'll have an article that will actually tell you this is the independent variable, this is the dependent variable. All right. In this case, we had to get a little bit creative. Okay. But again, just remember, the whole point of academic research is to document these relationships, these causal relationships between independent and dependent variables, and then the article will assert proof for that relationship. Okay. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to send me an email.